Welcome back to another snapshot video. For those of you that did not catch the video earlier in the week on Monday, Minecraft's future has been announced. For all of the details, you can check out that video, but the big thing most of us want to know is what's the future of these Minecraft updates? Well, there's going to be less of a focus on one big update per year, and now there's going to be smaller content drops in between the larger updates. They've actually already done this with the last couple of minor updates, one of them being named the Armour Pause. And if we were to consider this update as a minor update, I'd say that it's currently shaping up to be a quality of life update. There are lots of decent smaller changes to the game, but nothing big like a new mob or entity. And many of the mobs themselves have been tweaked. And of course, there's been a lot of under the hood tweaks and changes too. And speaking of those tweaks and changes, new things are possible and I've got some cool stuff to show you at the end of this video. But first of all, let's talk about Snapshot 24W37A. This first one is rather exciting and we're going to have to turn down our render distance to test this. Enderpearls will now both load and tick chunks. So I'm going to go to the edge of this border, aim up high, so we're going to throw this enderpearl way into an unloaded chunk and it's actually going to be able to load that chunk tick it so that we get teleported to wherever we've thrown this ender pearl and just double checking we went about five chunks away from where we threw this ender pearl this was not possible before the ender pearl would have waited in the unloaded chunk to be loaded and this means on rare occasions if you'd thrown an ender pearl into one you could get randomly teleported when it's loaded now ticking means that other things can happen inside that chunk while it's being loaded by the ender pearl. This makes cross-dimensional transport a lot more reliable and consistent because the chunks don't get loaded, they get ticked too. And the ender pearl will now unload from the world when a player logs off of a server. So a little bit of time has passed by and the ender pearl is pretty much where we last saw it on our screen. And yes, the area was loaded by my alt account. Now this could possibly lead to some new tech with ender pearls being able to be used as chunk loaders but also possibly transporting you to different dimensions more reliably using some redstone contraptions. It'll definitely be interesting to see what the community comes up with these changes. Next up we're going to revisit what happens to mobs when they convert. We covered this in the last snapshot but more changes have been made again. So they fixed a bug related to what data gets transferred when a mob is converting. And this week they have reverted some of those changes like health, attributes and loot tables. And they haven't really given a reason why. But now we've been given a full breakdown of what to expect when the mob converts. It will retain its age, who it's angry at, what armor it's wearing, its full distance, if it's on fire if it's leashed, and if it has any passengers to name a few. But then there's some different cases for mobs that split into several other mobs, i.e. a slime dying and turning into smaller slimes. So here things like what armor they're wearing, how far they've fallen, and if they're leashed won't get passed on. And due to this bug, the following things are not passed on. So health is no longer going to be passed along, neither are loot tables or their XP. I just picked out the more relevant examples there, so if you want to read the full list, there's a link to the article in the description box below. And before we go any further with this video, YouTube tells me that most of you watching these snapshot videos aren't actually subscribed, so please do consider hitting that button, and then it just makes it easier for you to catch these update videos for Minecraft in the future. Now we get to move on to the technical stuff, and there's some fun things in this one. If you're into customizing the game, you can customize how frequently a chicken lays its egg or an armadillo sheds a shell. Oh, this is not quite what I thought. It actually works like a loot table, so you can make it drop a random item. I think it'd be really cool though if they let you change the time and the frequency of those drops too. And now the loot tables for the hero of the village effect have been moved over to this data-driven system too. We now got tags for what items will allow a laze to duplicate, what items pandas will pick up from the ground and eat, and what you can use in a brewing stand as fuel. Once again, there are lots of item component changes to allow you to customize some of the core features and behavior of the game. So any item that's equipable can further be manipulated to be swappable with a right click between the hotbar and the inventory slot. And if the player takes damage, does that item also take damage when equipped? There's a few other less interesting things there as well. And when it comes to sub predicates for entities, we got them for sheep and salmon. 
And advancement triggers have now been changed from killed by a crossbow to killed by an arrow so that you can specify from what weapon that arrow was fired. And this week, the real good stuff is in the resource pack with GUI sprites. The first of which is the highlighted slot, which simply changes the shade of gray when you hover over a slot. You and sent me a bunch of cool examples. Here we've got the oak button with highlights around the edges outside that space that we usually see highlighted. Here's another one that's a little bit sus. I couldn't tell you exactly what's changed with this one. And guess what? Animations are a thing too. These can actually be animated textures. Seriously cool stuff. As well as that, the appearance of a highlighted item within the bundle can be customized. And Ewan sent me another example of what that might look like. If you're not sure what this is, it's when you pick up items in a bundle and then you scroll through to see the different items in the bundle here. Of course, this is all in line with making more and more aspects of the game data-driven, which I think is seriously cool, because that means the community gets to customize this stuff. So thanks to Ewan and also Shrimps Now, who made those cool textures that I showed a moment ago. Now here's something that's plagued the game for quite some time, as you can see. You've probably seen videos on YouTube about this, how boats can kill the passengers when they fall at a very specific distance. And there are several of these numbers from falling from 12 blocks all the way up to 315. And if I recall correctly, this is a quirk of the maths that's used to calculate the fall damage. And so a player falling in a boat just hits the ground and dies. And that was a bug fix report, so apparently it's been patched. But the rest of the bugs here are mostly from the very recent snapshots that we've had. And we actually saw this one in one of our videos, didn't we? Right, so how about that custom stuff that I teased to you at the beginning of this video, you know? I'm wearing a chest plate. I'm wearing an elytra. What's going on here? This is all possible thanks to a data pack and a resource pack that my buddy Chimera Dev sent to me. So check this out. You put a chest plate and an elytra into the crafting bench. You get this fancy thing. And guess what? It actually works. <laughs> I can fly and still have the benefits of the protection from the chest plate. This is something that people have actually wanted in the game for a long time. And you know what? You can actually just do it with a data pack and resource pack now. Now, if you watched my Hermitcraft series, you would have seen many of us are rocking custom models on our head using carved pumpkins. And now there's going to be even more flexibility with how you go about doing this. So if we rename this to the name of a custom model, we can use this menu to change the model of the item that I'm holding and make it wearable too. And now when I go and right click on this thing, the crown is on my head. Pretty cool. So yeah, the game's customization just keeps getting improved with each and each snapshot. And like I mentioned, this was actually made possible by the previous snapshots. And on that note, I think we've covered all of the more relevant changes in this snapshot video. So this is the end of it. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. Thank you for doing that. And I'll see you soon with another one. Bye bye.